Welcome to the weather forecast for the week beginning Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. This is Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth for Longmont Public Media. Monday, November 20th into Thanksgiving week, we have a first quarter moon. It's going to be beautiful if you take a walk any time that week. Sun, only big sunspot clusters kind of moving away um, on the right side of the sun at this point. Point. This is about the blankest I've seen it for quite a while. Looking at drought from last week to this week, uh, a little bit worse in the south and north uh, west. So yeah, we're, we are going quite a long time without rain. We had so much water in the earlier part of the year that we are still drought free in two thirds of the state. Looking nationally, things are a little worse south of us as well, and a little bit out here in the uh, southeast states. The California and up into the Intermountain West is drought free. That's pretty shocking from how deep a drought they were in just a year ago. Um, I guess people were calling it the mega drought. Well, the mega drought's over for now. Uh, looking at smoke, not much going on. A little fire up here, a little bit of smoke here and there, but nothing to talk about. Colorado's pretty much air clear. Looking at the snowpack, you can see each little snow event that we've had. And now it's kind of what's there is staying, but we're drifting behind normal so we're getting down to the lower part of the graph it's still early one good storm could take us any place up into this uh, good re region the higher mountains got some precipitation over the last week a little bit in the lower levels we had just i saw the sidewalk get wet a few times i don't think we got any snow at the lower elevations um so yeah starting a little bit of that snowpack up there but it's isolated that part of the state. Looking for severe weather, nothing to be talked about. Uh, southwest and then South Florida could get some thunderstorms, but just everyday type. Uh, for Thursday, same thing. And for Friday, pretty similar. Looking at the surface analysis map, we got a storm in the Southwest and that's associated with those storms and same south of the stationary front, you have the warmer uh, air. For Thursday, we do get some mountain snows and little rain showers that come over the northern I-25 corridor. It sure doesn't look like much at all. It's a very small weakening system, but the mountains, some lucky spots will get a few inches. Going to Friday, the next storm is coming towards us. We're kind of dry for the most part. Our normal high temperatures drop from 52 to 47. The normal lows are really low now, 24 down to 20, so we're going to be normally expecting temperatures in the teens really soon that's not happening not yet um, here's our monday system a little more coherent but it's not a big storm and then there's something at the end of next week around thanksgiving or after thanksgiving water vapor there's the moisture coming up out of the tropics that storm out west it's giving them some nice mountain snows and some lowland rains but it is weakening as it approaches us here's the, the system over florida dry in between. Uh, so looking at the upper air pattern for Thursday noon, <clears throat> I do have this little pinch in the jet stream coming over. That's what's going to give us a little chance of mountain showers and maybe something on the lowlands. Um, there's a system sitting off the coast there. Here's the trough causing convection over Florida. And this is what the surface looks like with a little snow in the highest elevations, light showers on the western slopes. Uh, storm in the southwest and the southeast. Next important thing is Monday morning and there's uh, the good little short wave coming through. It's going to be moving fast. That's the problem. It's going to go by us very quickly. Not pulling a lot of cold air, not pulling a lot of moisture. But there is pretty heavy snow so we might see a good burst. Um, the GFS does not give us anything on I-25 but it's possible. Still things could change. So let's put it all in motion. Again, it's a pretty quiet weather pattern. There's a hint at the end of Thanksgiving that things might really change. And we'll try to take it out that far. So here's Saturday and Sunday. And then here comes this short wave from Monday. Diving down over us, so low right there. <clears throat> pretty strong jet stream overhead. Due north wind, so it'll be cold. Not super cold, but cold. Then Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday, you can see a big blob of cold air coming down from the north. And that is traveling a lot slower. It is staying north of us. Then the lobe swings through 
uh, end of the weekend. So I, I could give us a cold fetch. So here's the abnormally warm temperatures. Oh my goodness, look, look at that. So then we get this little ripple of cool on Thursday and we're right back to above normal. A lot above normal. I mean, 60s and almost 70 is a lot above normal right now. Um, then the cold air comes in on Monday and it's pretty good shot. You're gonna feel this one. You're gonna get a coat out and it goes all the way down to Texas and into the Gulf and behind it in the west is warmth, but we've got this river of cold, this pool that's kind of trying to slide down the east side of the Rockies. So you can see another strong front come going after Friday after Thanksgiving, very cold air on the uh, eastern side of the Rockies, not so much on the western slope, and like that. Uh, water vapor, uh, this is actually precipitated water, but it would look like water vapor in an image. And yeah, we're kind of in between. You got a good ribbon of moisture coming over Saturday and Sunday. So there is some mid atmospheric moisture for this thing to operate on on Monday, but it dries out and moves off pretty quickly. For dew points, we're pretty dry. There's a little pocket of moisture that comes in from Thursday into Friday, and it's dry in the mountains. Going into Sunday, we, the moisture's out here. It's trying to get back to us. Cold front swings in. The deeper moisture stays over in Kansas, and shockingly dry air comes in by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Very, very dry. Extremely dry, negative 10, negative 9 uh, dew points in this pocket coming down on Friday after Thanksgiving with the cold front. Yeah, pretty interesting. So let's look at the smallness of these storms. Here comes the first one for Thursday. And Friday, the low is way down in the Texas Panhandle and just doesn't give us much uplift at all. <laughs> Dry through the weekend, little showers in the western slopes. Sunday, higher mountains, and then the storm kind of zips on through on Monday. So I think lower elevations should see some snow. It just doesn't look like much. Certainly does not look like, at this time, school closing snow levels. Here's Thursday and Thanksgiving, and then the day after Thanksgiving and Friday. So that looks like a little better storm, but nobody's gonna be going to school. So no school day thoughts there. So for the next five days, uh, <clears throat> with this system, the wind direction will be such the uplift on this side of the Rockies and sinking air on this side of the Rockies. Sinking air warms and dries, uh, going further from the uh, rel dew point, a relative humidity of 100%. So it just gets we get this rain shadow or snow shadow effect over here. So even if it's going up crazy up here, it'll just be windy and dry down here. Look in the next 10 days, we do get a little bit. There's a quarter inch of moisture out of pulling in the next storm and maybe some snow. That's two to three inches along I-25, one to two. So we can hope. So for the next few days, uh, really warm and mostly dry. 60s all the way through till Monday. And it's not cold enough for daytime snow if it remains that high. So nighttime, early morning, nighttime snow, I don't, we'll see. Then it really quickly goes above normal again after that. So check out Longmont Leader for frequent weather updates and great local news. This has been Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth saying keep looking up.